But, uh, Eugenia was a beautiful woman too when she was young. I've seen pictures of her. Nana, they called her. Well, they called yeah, her Nana. Eugenia. Well, she was named after my grandma, see. My grandma's name was Eugenia. Well, I'm talking about your grandma, but she was a beautiful woman. Your mother looked a lot like her. Like her, yes. And and uh, Pietro's daughter now uh, is named, is named to say Eugenia, Eugenia. It seems like in the Italian families, the same names are used over and over and over. Oh yeah. Uh, now Dino was kind of a little throwback, but the second name is Rigoletto, and yeah. there were a bunch of Rigolettos. Well, the first Rigoletto was uh, my age, but he was killed by. Uh, a German soldier in but their yard. In the Second World War. Second World War. Yeah. And then along came the Rigoletto that you met, and uh, they named him Rigoletto. And the other guy's name is Roberto. So there's he, a bunch his of name Roberto, Roberto. Benedetti's too. Now, so, uh, now, this was yeah. all, though, uh, during the First World War. Yes. Were there a lot of, there must have been a lot of men from the village who were in the war. Uh, oh, yeah, and Gino. Were Gino and, and uh, no, that was the second the second World War. Yeah. yeah. What I was wondering true. was, I was trying to remember, were the Italians fighting on the same side as no, the Americans? No, the Italians were allies. At well, the, they uh, were the allies first, in the First were, World War. Yeah, exactly. because first, I know they weren't during yeah. the Second World Mussolini War. Because Mussolini didn't come into power until. Oh. In the 30s. 36, I so think. So in the First World War, they were allies. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. France yeah. and uh, Italy, the, the, England. It they were all against uh, the Kaiser's. The Triple yeah. Alliance against the, the uh, Axis. Mm -hmm. uh, the, right. uh, the, not the Axis, the, uh, well, it was Austria, uh, Hunger, uh, Austria, Germany, and. Uh, well, it was Kaiser Wilhelm, right. whichever countries he had. Yeah. They were all but there wasn't any conflict within the family then because your father was. Oh, no. Was, uh, no, 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 yeah. no, no, no. And. Um, so there must have been uh, a lot of men who were gone because they were fighting. It was all the old men so, that left. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Your grandparents. My grandfather, uh, Pucci, and Do my grandfather. Do you remember any, any, any young men in the village at the time? No. Well, I was too small. I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. So do you remember what uh, made uh, <clears throat> your mother decide to come back? Uh, was it? Well, after the war was over, oh. 1918. Uh -huh. And my father uh, came out. Well, my father spent most of his time in the hospital while he was in the, in the American Army. Oh, was he wounded? He had a sciatic nerve. Oh. He couldn't walk. Oh. And his leg was like this. But uh, full pack, they were in camp in Texas. And they had to march. And there were several other of his friends from the west side in the same unit with him that practically carried him on these marches, and the captain wouldn't recognize the fact that this guy was, was sick. Finally, he couldn't walk anymore, so uh, he ended up in the hospital over there. So that was his back that, that really was yeah. uh, That's the right. same thing that and you, eventually, uh, you had. Eventually, he had eventually. the spinal fusion just like yeah. I did. Yeah. But uh, when he came out, and he was, uh, he tried everything, you know, but uh, after he got, uh, got out and he got settled, then he sent for us again. Did he Every come time. over to Italy to get no. you? or you? Uh -huh. No, and by that time, he had gotten his job back again at, uh, at, Tractor, at uh, McCormick Works. See, in those days, uh, if, you, if you were uh, drafted and you were going into the Army, your job was gone. Mm -hmm. When you came back, you, you started as a new person. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're gone, your job is still there, mm -hmm. and your service continues, yeah. but not in those days. So when we get back here in 1920, uh, we were living with uh, Faber and his family, Gagno his name was, Fabri, and then eventually we took the flat over and they moved someplace else, I forget what the deal was. Oh, Maybe they built that house <coughs> on 24th Street. Well, that was a little later. Oh. But, uh... You, you had started to describe being picked up from the ship and, and taking, yeah. taken back to the, to the flat, Faber's flat, 
Was that part, what, did he have the hardware? Was this railroad station. Oh, oh. Uh, I don't remember anything from the time we sailed across, except that uh, what you Minnie. Call, Minnie, yeah. was, uh, Minnie. Minnie was was good. there, and she eventually was in the same neighborhood with us. Now, tell me, did you, uh, when you came back in, do you remember, did you come in through Ellis Island? And then you took the I don't train? Remember that you don't part. remember that part. Well, the only part I remember about the ship coming back was Minnie was chasing me, and, and the, the, the ship lurched, <coughs> and I hit my, my head against the railing, and I broke my nose. Yeah, she's so got, still got the bump yeah. to show it. And that's the only incident I remember about the ship. But I do remember uh, Bruno's father and mother coming to the railroad station and taking us home. That was in Chicago. Yeah, yeah. and when I, I, the, the thing that it really impressed me was they used to have gas light in those days. And around midnight, it was pretty dark. You know, these gas light uh, didn't illuminate too much. But uh, that's about it. Uh, on the streets as well. Oh the yeah, all the streets, was everything was gas. Huh. Electricity was, hey, that was a luxury. <clears throat> Did Faber have the hardware store already at that time? Oh no. Oh no, this was his father. That oh, oh, oh. Faber was just his age. Oh. They were exactly the same age. <coughs> he just turned 82 to the same <coughs> So at that point, he was about eight or nine, like you were. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, we lived on 25th Street for quite some time. And then, uh, right next started, to the firehouse. Right next door to the firehouse. And they, they would hear the. Horses. They had the horses in those days, you know, and these horses were so trained that when the bells started to ring, they would kick the doors open from their stable, and each horse would get underneath the harnesses which were hanging from the ceiling, and, and wait to be buckled up. In the meantime, uh, there was uh, this boiler was fired by with uh, wood. Uh, one of them was assigned to start the fire that would build up the steam to run the pump. And uh, as soon as the horses were buckled up, away they'd go. In huh. the meantime, us kids would be going upstairs and sliding down the poles, you know. <laughs> we had a heck of a time over there. Uh, and we got to, to know the ticker tape would tell us exactly where the fire was. Yeah, because they used to have yeah. like a little yeah. wire. As a matter of fact, one, one, of the, one of the firemen, Fred, was a young man. There was a big fire at the Cormac Works, oh. and he went in there uh, trying to put out the flame in one department because they had wooden floors that were all oil soaked from the machines and everything, and uh, a beam fell down and he got killed in there. Now, when did Diana come along? Well, she did came along 15 years later. Oh, I didn't realize she was that much she younger did. than yeah, you. She was born in Chicago. Yeah. Uh, I think we were living she was born college. in 1926. We were living on 22nd place across the street from our little house, right on the, on the third floor. Well, but in the meantime, you had, you were st you had started to go to Pickard again, right? Yeah. Yes. Oh, well, I started going to Pickard as soon as we got here, you know. And uh, I couldn't wear shoes because in Italy I was always barefooted. So I wore tennis shoes all the time. And in order to get me a pair of shoes, my mother used to have to take me downtown at uh, Morris Ch Rothschild. And they had a system in there where they measured your shoes, your foot, and made the shoes to fit. Mm. Anyway, I started going to Pickard School. I couldn't speak a word of English. I was 10 years old. They put Nine. me in kindergarten. Nine. Anyway. Uh, they put me in kindergarten with these little kids, oh. four or five years old, and I was already quite grown. And uh, you know, everybody used to make fun out of me because mm -hmm. I couldn't, I couldn't understand what they were saying or anything. Were you you the only one that was in that situation sure. in that school? Sure, I was in there alone. Mm. Well, they didn't keep me in there too long. Mrs. Ryan, the principal, she yanked me out of there and she put me in first grade. In the meantime. I had to go into her office every day after three o'clock, and she would coach me. And start little by little, I started speaking English. But 
As today, my vocabulary is quite limited. Oh, I don't think so. Anyway, uh, she may be the bell ringer. Yeah. I used to have to run around the, the whole school with the bell, you know, and the kids would first bell and then the second bell. And, and then I used to have to go in her office and push the buttons for all the... And by that time, everybody had to be in their seats. And uh, that went on for quite a while. But Arthur Pellegrini is the guy that really clipped me one time. We were going down the stairs and somehow or other I happened to touch him. And uh, when we got outside, he was waiting out there. And we used to play mibs. They call them mibs with the, the steel. The big marbles. Marbles. They were ball bearings, actually, ball weren't they? Ball bearings, yeah. yeah. And he had two of them in his hand. Yeah. And we, <laughs> he's. I don't know how it happened, but anyway, he hauled off at me and he split my lip. Mm. We, we became real good friends later on. Anyway, uh, little by little I started speaking a little better English, but uh, I skipped a couple of grades because, you know, uh, I was 16 when I graduated. And most guys were almost graduating high school at that time. Mm -hmm. So this was in 1927, and uh, instead of going to high school, I had to go to work. So you went through what was it, sixth grade or seventh and or eighth grade? Eighth grade. I graduated. Grade. Yeah. Oh, you did I go graduated through eighth grade. grammar school. That's as far as I uh -huh. got. Uh huh. Uh huh. But. Uh, but you spoke English good by that time. Fairly oh, well, yes. you know. Oh yes. Well, oh, fluently, yes. but uh, anyway, I got by. And, and my but, mother and father, they didn't speak any English. So all the time, of course, you were speaking Italian in and, the house. and English yes. at the same and time. And also in the neighborhood. And because in the they were all, you know, they all spoke Italian. And there weren't... And, uh, none of them would speak, knew how to speak English. Yeah, very few. And they, the men usually did learn at least enough to get by, to get but by. the women yeah, did father became quite fluent because he was in business and so on and then he was always interested and it it was the individual's uh, let's say uh, aggressiveness to learn, to learn. The language that's right my father had no yeah uh, no Honorable, ambition whatsoever too lazy to, to, to change to bother, you know their life consisted of of uh, working coming home changing eating and out to the club. That's it. That was their complete the, life. The Italian men all played cards. And there were clubs throughout the whole neighborhood. Okay. And they played cards most of the time. I remember the Piedmont Poe Club or the Poe yeah. Piedmont Club. Yeah, that's still there. And then there was the Spartaco Lavanini yeah. and the, uh, everyone had their group. Well, in a way, uh, unless you had some reason to to learn because of your job, yeah, uh, right. it wasn't necessary. There wasn't any motivation because right. you all lived uh, in your with your yeah. na old neighborhood, even from Italy. In That's some right. cases, the same. You see, her father uh, read a lot. He was quite learned. I mean, as far as literature is concerned, my father never read wrote, read anything. All he knew how to do was play poker. He was, was he a good poker player he was a on good the West poker side. Player, huh? <laughs> but uh, where were we? <laughs> well, <laughs> you finally uh, you graduated. graduated from Pickard, yeah. and then you went to uh, where? Well, uh, yeah. Well, you went to the. Uh, I started college. getting all kinds of jobs, and uh, my mother insisted that I go to school to learn how to do something. You know, so a little later, uh, I started going to uh, Greer College, they call it. It's an automotive school. And I went there for about two years. Mm -hmm. And that's where I learned to be a mechanic. Where was that? This was on, on uh, around 21st and Wabash. Did you go on the streetcar? This was during the Capone uh, era. Uh, yeah. And the silver phallics were just uh, half a block away from the school I went to. Was that a, was that a place of his, of Capone's? Sure, the what silver phallics. What was and that? And Colosimo's. You've heard of Colosimo's yeah. restaurant? Yeah. That's uh, 
That was a half a block away from the school I went to, right on Wabash. Huh. And that was his headquarters, so oh, to speak. Oh, yeah. He's, he's the one that killed Cosimo that took over his business. Huh. But now, this is a little yeah, tangent, but I just want to, for the record, clarify this. He was from an entirely different part of Italy than your oh, yeah, yeah. He, he was, was Sicily. He was yeah, Sicilian. that's yeah. what I thought. He yeah. was Sicilian. Was there, sure. was there uh, uh, mafia activity in the old neighborhood? No, because well, he wasn't. was the boss. Uh, yeah, period. Uh, but there was the guys on the north side and the guys on the south side, and he controlled all of them. Well, we, the only, uh, let's say, uh, activity that we uh, saw in our neighborhood was Dago Dan. They called well, him he Dago was a Dan. union agent. But he was a union agent. He was a teamster, teamster union teamster agent. Union. He was the Hoffa of his time. Let's huh. say. Yeah. And he met the same kind of end. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I think you told me once about Dago Dan getting in a, a gunfight with somebody in Toscano's yeah, restaurant. Yeah, that's right. Well, that, in, in Bella Bruna's Bruna. restaurant. You that, just read that thing? That, mm -hmm. Bella Bruna had the restaurant uh, right on 24th Place in Oakley. Uh, and uh, her, na her husband's name was Paul. And Dago Dan was always after Bella Bruna, you know. And he succeeded quite often. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, well, they were the talk of the town. Yeah. Let's face it. You know. But one day, I guess they got into an, uh, an argument or something, and they go down and says, I'm going to walk into your place, and I'm going to kill you. So this down. was the old, you know, the 12 o'clock deal. Wow. Everybody on Oakley Avenue was waiting. They go down, pulled up with his tuts. He had a stuck bear cat. Bear cat. Bulletproof, <laughs> and he parked in front of Ella Bruno's restaurant, and he walked in there, and Paul was uh, at the bar waiting for him with two guns, <laughs> and all we heard was a lot of shooting. Did you actually hear it? Were well, sure. We oh were across god. the street by Anzalotti's The Undertaker. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and, <laughs> you figured that was a good place to be? Yeah. <laughs> Plus, <laughs> real so, happy. So everybody's waiting to you know who, who got it. Yeah. And all of a sudden, they go, Dan comes out, gets in his car, and walks away, and everybody would say, Poor Paul. Poor Paul must have got it. Yeah. Instead, Paul came out, <laughs> smoking a cigar, like as if nothing happened. It was really something funny. Uh, there was shooting on there all the time. Well, how about Bacchelli? I was skating down Oakley Avenue one day, and Laura's husband, Dan's wife, her father. Yeah. Oh, there's that. Uh, that that's, that's the package from Federal Express. So hang on right there. No, no, you were skating down Oakley Avenue, or? Oh, that that one. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was before, yeah. before I started working. You guys need to sit a little closer together still. Yeah, yeah you, you were just talking about, you were about skating. Then, you were roller skating? I was roller skating down Oakley Avenue, and Dan's uh, father-in-law, actually, he was, was gunning for a guy that was supposedly making a pass at his wife. And just as I was, this was right in front of Anzalotti's funeral home, of all places. <clears throat> as I was passing by there, going down Oakley Avenue on my skates, shots started to ring out, and, and Bacchelli was shooting at this guy, and this guy ran down the stairs and hit under uh, the cement steps, and Bacchelli was emptying his gun down there and never hit him. And that, by that time, I was long gone. I, I was way down on 25th Street by that time. I never even went back to see what happened either. <laughs>